and welcome to Tanka Talks. Today I would like to explain a bit more about Chen Rezik, one of the most famous Buddhas. Chen Rezik is one of the foremost deities of the Mahayana tradition, although he's also known in the Theravada and Vajrayana traditions. In the Mahayana tradition, Chen Rezik is considered the embodiment of the great compassion of all the Buddhas. And Chen Rezik is his Tibetan name, and it consists of three syllables. Chen, meaning I, Re, gives an idea of continuity, and Zik means to look. And therefore he's described as he who constantly looks at the all sentient beings with the eye of compassion. Not only his name in Tibetan, but also in Sanskrit is widely used. His Sanskrit name Avalokiteshvara means so much as he who looks with an unwavering eye, meaning that he is never hesitant and helps wherever he can. Another title is the one who hears the cries of the world. So Chen Rezik is the embodiment of the infinite compassion of all the Buddhas. And in one of my previous Tanka talks, I explained that there are different versions of Chen Rezik, such as the two-armed, the eight-armed, and even the one-thousand-armed version. But this four-armed Chen Rezik is the one that is most commonly depicted. The white color of the body represents that Chen Rezik is completely free of negativity, that he's completely purified. Chen Rezik's four arms represent the four immeasurable qualities of a bodhisattva. The quality of immeasurable love, immeasurable compassion, immeasurable joy and immeasurable equanimity. So let's have a look at what he is holding in his hands. Cherezik's first two hands represent his loving bodhicitta motivation, and that is also why they are in front of his heart. In these hands, he holds a precious jewel or gemstone that makes all our wishes come true. It's the wish-fulfilling jewel. In his second right hand, Cherezik holds a crystal mala, a rosary symbolizing his ability to liberate all sentient beings from samsara, the cyclic existence that we are currently in. The mala is often depicted in the shape of a number eight. The mala also reminds the practitioner to recite Chen Rezik's famous mantra, O Mani Padme Hum. And in my courses, I offer a detailed explanation for this mantra as well as how to use it. In his second left hand, Chen Rezik holds a blue lotus flower, again symbolizing his loving bodhicitta motivation, the desire that all beings be freed from suffering. Lotus flowers are often depicted on Buddhas and also green Tara and white Tara hold lotuses in their hands. So the Buddha had eight prominent disciples, which are also known as the eight great bodhisattvas, or the eight close sons of the Buddha. And each of these beings stand for a high principled quality. At the time of the Buddha, Chen Rezik was one of his chief, chief disciples and he played an important role in many of the Buddha's lectures, especially in the widely recited Heart Sutra. The Heart Sutra contains the essence of all the 84,000 teachings of the Buddha. In the Sutra, Chen Rezik is the main speaker and inspired by the Buddha, he explains to Shariputra and a large group of monks, nuns and lay people how a bodhisattva gains direct insight into the true nature of reality, the profound perfection of wisdom. But besides Shemrezik, there were two other more prominent bodhisattvas out of the eight, namely Manjushri and Vajrapani. And they are simply referred to as the three bodhisattvas or the three great bodhisattvas. But what is exactly a bodhisattva? It's a sentient being who has fully realized bodhicitta. Bodhicitta is defined as a special mind with the only wish to reach enlightenment, the highest level of consciousness, in order to benefit all sentient beings. One of the signs that someone has attained bodhicitta and thus has become a bodhisattva is that the thought of I and me no longer arises in his mind. He or she is solely working for the welfare of others. 
Together, Cherezik, Manjushri and Vajrapani represented three principal aspects of the path leading to enlightenment. You could say these are three qualities that you must develop to become a Buddha. Cherezik embodies infinite compassion, Manjushri embodies infinite wisdom, and Vajrapani embodies infinite power. Infinite power stands for the determination to be free from cyclic existence by renunciation of the causes that makes us suffer, such as attachment and anger and jealousy. So it's about dealing in the right way with every situation that crosses your path. And with infinite power, wisdom and compassion come together. Here you see the three of them painted on a rock in Tibet. And the three principal aspects of the path together form the essence of the Buddha nature that is present in us all. Therefore, it's very important to develop these qualities within ourselves. In my next Tanka talks, I will explain more about Manjushri and Vajrapani. I hope you enjoyed this small Tanka talk and hope to see you at the next one. If you want to learn more about Chenrezig, Manjushri and Vajrapani, and maybe even learn how to draw or paint them, check out the links to my upcoming Tanka art courses and lectures in the description below.